Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to the Modern OpenGL series. Today we're going to go ahead and make a few little corrections and improvements to our code base, just some quality of life things before we keep adding features. But with that said, I want to make sure you know of this announcement that this course playlist is now on courses.mshaw.io so you can sign up for free the same lessons that you're watching on say YouTube in a distraction free environment and again hopefully that'll be useful for you for just tracking your progress and there's discussions and so on that you can participate in but anyways with that said let's go ahead and get into our OpenGL code here and make just a few small improvements this will be a short video here uh, but as far as doing this, I always like to do a code review here again, looking at our program again from the main here where we initialize our program, set up OpenGL, our vertex specification where we're setting up all of our geometry, uh, getting things ready for our pipeline, creating our pipeline, um, and then ultimately running in our main loop. So the little corrections that I want to make here first and foremost are to go into our, uh, let's look at our vertex specification here. Now, this was a little tiny error that I made, <laughs> but it's something very subtle. Somebody pointed out in the comments that I wanted to fix here. Uh, so we've got our vector of floats here. This is going to be our data for making our uh, rectangles or any geometric data that we have. We generate our uh, vertex array here bind to it, and then our bind uh, for our buffer object that we create here. Now, all of this is looking pretty good here, except there are a few places where I've messed up and I've used GL underscore capital uh, F-L-O-A-T for float here, and that's an enum. That's not an actual size here. Okay, so let's actually look at buffer data here. Now, we might get lucky in this value might be four bytes, the same as a float on this particular architecture, but those things could change. So um, if we go to OpenGL, the types here, um, basically what we want here is this guy here, GL float. Um, and there is a common enum for this. And the enum is something that's supplied inside of uh, OpenGL when it's like asking for a type here, uh, or maybe select answer. But really, this is what we want. This float, that's the 32-bit or 4-byte thing, uh, because um, these are the sort of guaranteed, uh, you know, whatever platform you're running on, uh, OpenGL has a type def or an alias uh, that GL float will make sure it's a 32 bit version of a float. So, you know, maybe later on in, you know, history, uh, we'll get floats that are by default, you know, 64 uh, bits and then have to use a half float or whatever on some architecture that's 32 bits. It, it doesn't matter. All you need to know is that we have this GL float here. Um, now, if you look at just a little bit of a hint here on how to try to avoid this thing, like GL vertex attrib pointer, okay, it's asking for. Uh, GL size. Um, let's do GL, uh, what were we? GL buffer data here. Okay, so it's also looking for a uh, size here, GL size uh, I pointer here. Uh, let's see what I provided here uh, for the uh, pointer here. Yeah, I gave it a size of something GL float here, but again, uh, if I look at this little chart on the OpenGL uh, types from the OpenGL wiki, uh, you'll notice that GL size, I point it right, it's on this left side of this column, right? It's not asking for an enum. Um, let's see if we can try to find a function that has an enum. I think I had one up here, uh, right? Like GL bind buffer has a GL enum type here. Uh, so again, you're looking for things that are all capitals, okay? The enums in OpenGL tend to be all capitals. Uh, it's a little mistake that I made here. So uh, basically in this video, I just want to get our code uh, a little bit more correct and use GL uh, float. Uh, like is specified uh, over here. So GL uh, and then float. Uh, and we're going to try to find as many of those as we can here. I think I did it a few times. Uh, and I did it correctly here on our buffer data. I don't know. I just got lucky that those were uh, four bytes. So again, there's some of these little subtle things here. Uh, but I want to make sure we have as good of code as possible. So again, GL vertex attrib pointer. Uh, let's make sure that I did that correctly as well. It's looking for a size I thing which shows up uh, over here as a size I thing. Uh, so something just to keep in mind. Um, now these are, um, you know, little things that I would say are just important for reading uh, code in general. Uh, let's see, is the data normalized? Okay, is that an enum or, uh, and, and here's an example, uh, let's see, GL vertex attrib pointer, where it is taken in enum, so that's something that's all capital. Uh, and I wonder if GL enum should have been all capitals here just to help me <laughs> remember that. Uh, and then let's see, GL boolean uh, for normalized. Uh, let's see, now I put GL false here. Uh, again, that might be incorrect. Let's see what the documentation says. If I go here uh, for boolean, I think it should just be a type here. Uh, let's see here. I guess they're just putting in uh, false here. 
Uh, interesting. Hmm, I wonder if they've, uh, yeah, I guess uh, false works there. Uh, so let's let's do that here. I wonder <laughs> if that was causing any uh, issues here. So false. Uh, and let's go ahead and do false here. And make sure that our size uh, is of the actual uh, type here. Same thing for our offset, right? We want to actually offset by the correct amount of bytes there. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better here. I'm going to search uh, in a second here. Let's see if I did any other weird mistakes here. Um, another example of where you have GL clear, and these are enums here. Let's see here. If we look at our documentation, uh, GL clear. I'll just make sure that we're not doing something weird. Oh, I guess these are bit fields. I mean, it's telling me explicitly what to choose here. Um, yeah, they wouldn't be a nooms uh, bit field. Okay. Um, so again, just a little bit more on how to read the documentation. So hopefully that's useful. Uh, and then let's just do some other searches here. Again, looks like I've made this mistake a few times. GL uniform matrix 4F GL uniform matrix. Uh, well, these are all going to be pretty much the same here. 4FB. Let's choose the open GL ones. Uh, let's see, normalized, normalize. Oh, let's see, what parameter was that? Um, let's see. Oh, actually, that's for, let's see, GL uniform matrix, the third parameter. Let's see, is that for doing the transpose? Yeah, GL boolean. Um, I could just supply false there, um, is probably okay, but let's, let's set these here. False, uh, and false. Uh, that's quite a subtle thing. Um, I wonder if it was making any difference. I mean, we're going to rerun our code and see if we get the same thing that we did in the last video here. Uh, in a moment here. Uh, here's another GL false. All right. And again, this probably didn't make a difference at all to anything that we were doing um, in our code, but just want to make sure that we're super, super precise. And we always want the best because uh, I'm building up every single line of code that you watch in these videos. Um, for what we have here. So let's see if we find uh, actually uh, what I want to do here. Yeah, I can just do GL false. Uh, do I have that anywhere? Uh, now, interestingly, I do have the result here uh, that I'm checking if it's equal to GL uh, false here. Interesting, interesting. Uh, that I'll need to think about here for our compile shader here. Um, well, let's see here. Let's see, GL git shader IV. Okay, uh, let's go ahead here. GL shader IV. Let's see what uh, the type is. Uh, let's see. It's getting the params here. Returns the requested. Uh, let's see here. GL shader IV. That's where we're writing in the result here. And then I'm just checking if the result is false. Uh, let's see. GL get shader IV. That's kind of an interesting. Uh, I wonder if I'm doing something with like an OpenGL3. Interesting. GL get shader IV. Um, let's see. Maybe I clicked on the wrong thing here. I wonder why I've got... Oh, uh, sorry. I'm just looking at the wrong thing. That is with three parameters. Let's look it up here and say, why is that four parameters? Uh, okay, result params. This is giving me a GL int, so an int result is okay here. Um, GL false, I suspect, is just uh, zero. Uh, that's that's what it's going to give me as a result. So um, that's okay, the enum there. I think that's right. Let's see if there's any code here. And again, sometimes you just have to look for and, and see if there's an example. Uh, yeah, they're using like gl underscore true they are using the enums here to test against zero and one okay so i'm, I'm okay with that uh, against the actual type here okay so anyways let's see if we find it anywhere else where we're looking at the size or something because remember enums in c code are just integers so those will tend to be four bytes and that was the whole issue uh, so let's look at gl float um, now we did see this uh, for a type that is okay okay so that is for the enum here uh, okay, so that looks okay. So we've made some code corrections. We can go ahead and move forward uh, with these videos. Uh, now, the other thing that I want to go ahead and do, though, is I want to look in our main loop and just one little quality of life thing uh, that I want to do here. Um, 
let's go to our input. I want to add a, a way to escape or quit our program. <laughs> so basically, I want to check check for the. Uh, I could do it here in the event type. Uh, so we have for a, a quit event here. Uh, I could also just. I tend to like to use an SDL the get keyboard state. Um, let's just do that here. And basically, what I'm going to do is uh, and I'll bring in from the SDL documentation just. You can see everything uh, just looking up the scan codes. Uh, I want to look up SDL scan code escape. Uh, and that looks like the one that I'm going to want to bring in here. Uh, and let's go ahead and just uh, swap that in here. And what I'm doing is I think it's G quit equals false here. OK, uh, and that's what's going to terminate me. Uh, oh, actually true. OK, so caught a little error here. Uh, true. Okay, so that's that's the state we do want to quit. Um, and if I go to our main loop here, that's just a global variable for quit here. Okay. Um, so if we go to the top of our application again, I know we've got a lot of globals here. That's for learning purposes. That's fine. Uh, that's gonna tell us if we quit or not. Okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and compile this uh, using this uh, command on uh, Linux to bring in our source files, bring in the GLM library, bring in Glad, and so on. Uh, and let's see, uh, did we mess anything up? Nope, not yet. Let's see, we should see the same uh, result of our program uh, as previous. Uh, now the trick is I'm just going to have to bring this uh, window um, to you. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's go back in here. And if I use my arrow keys, let's see here. Oh, now that the window's in focus, we're still rotating. Everything's looking good. Uh, our shape's moving slowly and surely. Um, and I should be able to hit the escape key, capture the escape event, and there we go. Uh, now again, our window is locked because I um, did that for the mouse look. That might be something that you want, again, to like hit enter and disable and enable or something. Uh, again, you could decide if that's like annoying just to, um, again, like release your keyboard so you can do your uh, SDL development. <laughs> but that's the basic idea. So anyways, folks, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. We made a few little corrections here, learned a little bit more about reading the documentation, which is always useful. Uh, and as mentioned, you can track your progress here. Feel free to discuss anything uh, if you ran into any uh, errors. But uh, otherwise, uh, I know we took a little bit of a break from the OpenGL series. We'll go ahead and get some more videos throughout the summer of 24 and beyond. Uh, and as always, folks, look forward to your discussions. And thank you again for your time and attention.